Hello and welcome to All Saints Church. Last week I was able to take a few days retreat at home. I would normally have gone away somewhere, but as that wasn't possible for me this year, I made the best of being at home. I took the opportunity, among other things, to spend some time here in All Saints Church, familiarising myself with the beautiful stained glass windows. I used this booklet which was written some years ago to help me find more about the windows, the stories behind them and the different benefactors of the building. One of the things I discovered was that this isn't the first time in recent history that our church has been closed for a period of time. I found the memorial on the west wall of the church behind me, which is written about the history of the church. In November 1968, it was discovered that the church was in a state of imminent collapse, as the foundations were found to be undermined by a vast flow of water. As we know, there are a number of streams and brooks running through the town, and there was one running under the floor under the tower. The whole area under the east end of the tower had to be refounded. It was a huge job and the church had to be closed for a whole year. Those of you who were around at the time might remember it. I can't help wondering what happened about worship in Westbury during that time. The church was reopened on Advent Sunday 1969. If the work hadn't been done, the whole building was at risk of collapsing. I'm sure that that first Sunday of reopening would have been a hugely joyful occasion. Now we have just heard that we're going to be allowed to reopen our church for private prayer from next week. There's something about opening our doors to the public for the first time in three months which is very special and exciting. It seems tragic to me that during this biggest crisis which has affected our nation and our world for more than a generation, that our churches have had to remain closed. At a time when people turn to the church for comfort, support, prayer and worship, it has felt difficult that we've not been able to do so here, although we have still been the church in the community. Now we are given permission to start opening our doors, albeit cautiously and gradually, with all the hygiene regulations in place, to allow people to come in and find peace, comfort and security from God in prayer to him in his house. The clergy and church wardens from the Whitehorse team have recently met and worked out what we can reasonably do in these circumstances. We're planning to open All Saints and Holy Trinity for limited hours twice a week, with the help of volunteers to supervise and maintain the standards of hygiene which we all expect, and to keep everyone safe as best we can. We hope that people from our communities will find the presence of God, who loves us and longs for us to draw close to him, and find peace and solace in these places where generations of worshippers have gone before us. I'd like to read the opening verse of Psalm 84, which seems really relevant to us at this time. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing to enter the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our church buildings, which have stood in our communities as reminders of your presence with us and as a testimony to your love and faithfulness. We pray that as we prepare to open our doors once again, that all who enter through them may find your peace and the security of your presence with them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you all for the coming week.